I was in a lot of pain a lot and I found myself bloating up. Like I'd literally be like 10 pounds less one day and then three days later be 10 pounds heavier with water weight and just like constant fluctuation. Welcome to the Secret Life Podcast. Tell me your secret. I'll tell you mine. The best way to support the show is to subscribe and share. If you haven't left a review or ratings on iTunes, please do. It helps more people find our show. And if you want to be on it, please shoot me a note at secretlifepodcast at iCloud.com. Welcome to Secret Life Podcast. I'm Brianne davis Gant. Today, I'm pulling back the curtains of all kinds of human secrets. We'll hear about what people are hiding from themselves or others. You know, those deep, dark secrets you probably want to go to your grave with? Are those lighter, funnier secrets that are just plain embarrassing? Really, the how, what, when, where, and why of it all. Today, my guest is Olivia. Now, Olivia, I have a question for you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> what is your secret? Uh, a secret that I, it's not so secret, you know, among people in my life, I know, but I've never spoken about publicly, but a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which is an autoimmune disorder. And that has really changed my life. And, and at first I was struggling for a really long time uh-huh. and a lot of pain. Like even when you and I were working together, I was in a lot of pain a lot. And I found myself bloating up. Like I'd literally be like 10 pounds less one day. And then three days later, be 10 pounds heavier with water weight and just like constant fluctuation. Wow. And I started getting these outbreaks on my face and my head and everything just hurt all the time. And on my arms, I started getting these rashes and I don't really have those issues. And it just really came up. And I used to have so much pain through my body that I would have to go to sleep on a pointy massage ball on my neck at night just to get some relief. Well, can you explain to the, to the listeners what that is? Fibromyalgia, from what it's been explained to me, fibromyalgia is a disorder that is basically a widespread musculoskeletal pain. And you will get symptoms like bad sleeping, uh, memory loss, mood issues, fatigue. They call it a, an autoimmune disorder. Um, mm-hmm. Autoimmune disease is worse. Um, yeah. So a disease, an autoimmune disease like lupus, MS, those are diseases. And to explain, this is what was explained to me. So I apologize if you know any of this and um, I don't mean to be over. No, 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 no. But explain. This was really interesting to me because I've heard about inflammation as we all have. Yeah. And I've heard about our immune system. Um, take vitamin C, boost up your immune system, immune system, your immune system strong, your immune system's weak, inflammation. You don't want inflammation. I heard it, but it became so trite to me because people were just saying it all the time. It was just kind of thrown out there. So here's how the immune system and inflammation work. So your immune system is the army in your body and there to keep you safe and to fight off sicknesses and inflammation are like little soldiers. When you have inflammation, it means that your immune system went and set the alarm on the soldiers. They all woke up and they (laughs) rushed to go fight the sickness and help heal you. So when you sprain your ankle and it gets swollen, that's inflammation because of your immune system and all those soldiers going in to help fight it creates this puffiness because it's all going there. And that's what inflammation is, a puffiness because your immune system, your soldiers have woken up and you've got these little soldiers trying to fix it. Now, when people get autoimmune disorders, and we've heard a lot about that during COVID, Mm -hmm. when you have this underlying autoimmune disorder, you're at more risk, right? Mm -hmm. So autoimmune disorder is this. So even your immune system, which is the army, then you've got your um, inflammation, which are the soldiers. So autoimmune is when your body automatically flips on your immune system and then alerts those soldiers at the drop of a hat. So instead of spraining your ankle, and now of course that needs help, it you ate gluten and your body doesn't like it. Oh, everybody wake up, let's go. And it starts to attack everything in your body. Wow. And what happens with autoimmune disorders is that it starts to attack yourself. And I actually like to think of them as the White Walkers from Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know, they were the soldiers that died. And so now they are just on autopilot. They go and they're just killing everything without any kind of thought process. So when you have lupus, um, it'll attack different organs in your body. Instead of eating away at the disease, like say you eat dairy, um, it might create inflammation. And as soon as you have inflammation, your body goes, hey, soldiers, wake up. 
your, your immune system now turns into an autoimmune system and it automatically starts just attacking everything in your body. So you start to get really achy. MS is, a, is, is probably one of the worst, if not the worst autoimmune disease to have. Um, MS, they find out that you have MS specifically because it means the autoimmune is eating away at the the coating of the nerves around your spinal cord. Oh my God, that sounds so painful. Right. So when you no longer have the coating around your nerves, then your nerves are exposed and it's super painful. And that's why people can't walk anymore. And it's, MS is extremely difficult mm -hmm. to deal with. Um, yeah that's what the autoimmune targets. So when you have fibromyalgia, you know, your brain processes pain signals differently, right? right? And also inflammation differently. And so it's going, but fibromyalgia from my understanding is that it is, it's the step before it becomes a disease. So fibromyalgia is a newer thing and they're still learning a lot about it, but and I've had these symptoms for like six years. My weight would go up and down, up and down all the time. It just, I mean, it would be, I'd be on set and I would have to have two different sizes and the sizes would be two to three sizes apart because we wouldn't know what I would look like on the day. When we were working together, did you have to do that with your wardrobe? Yeah. And I, I had a lot of um, acne that came up um, from the rashes that we didn't know what it was. It was pretty bad, like on, on my cheeks and on my jawline, it was really bad that, you know, it took a lot of makeup to try to cover it because it was it was pretty, because I was really, I was like even more stressed during that time because I was doing a lot filming and I didn't know what was happening. And yeah. I was also, I was eating the things that were causing the inflammation to kick up even more. And really where I have figured out through doctors where the fibromyalgia came from was just being in, in stressful situations in my life, you know, and never really getting out from underneath the, the water. So mm. when you are stressed, inflammation will kick up because your body is in fight or flight. Yeah. No matter what kind of stress it is, if it's relationship stress, work stress, family stress, regular anxiety that comes up out of nowhere, your brain sends chemicals to your body saying we're stressed. Eventually what happens is your body will start to react to that. And then when you get something like an autoimmune disorder, it's because your body has, it's almost, you, you, you kept waking up, waking them up, waking them up. And then finally they're just like, okay, we're just going to stay on. We're just going to stay on. We're not going to get up anymore. <laughs> right. We're going to stay on because clearly we're in danger all of the time. And that's why it's really important for people to listen to their bodies. You know, if our bodies, you know, our, our arms, our legs, our skin, it, it, they cannot speak, you know, any kind of language, but it's language is in what comes out of it and how we feel. And so we really do have to listen to that. And I was ignoring it because I was really getting used to just gutting it out. You know, you were just, just going too. you were traveling, you were back mm -hmm. and forth. You were, you just went through a breakup, the mm -hmm. role you came on, right. You know, right at when we started and then it was stressful that job in general. So it felt yeah, like it all was... those things. And then your body just is like, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, before I took on that job, I had said it was really important to me that I was able to have three day weekends every other week. Mm -hmm. It was something that I wouldn't sign on um, unless I had that. And this is, this is when I knew what was going on with me. And I, and you know, it's hard because when people look at you and if you look healthy some days, or, and if you look, if I look bloated or have acne other days, it just looked like I wasn't taking care of yourself. Exactly. Or something. Yeah. And especially as a woman, I think it was a man's world we were working on also. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty much, you know, Hollywood is a man's world. So, <laughs> but, but they were very, but you know, the producers and the studio and network were all extremely understanding and helpful yeah. with that. But I had to, to learn it myself to say, this is what I need. Yeah. And once you say it, they respect it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that I was being a diva or asking for too much. It was like, in order for me to be operating at the level that you need me to these other days, I need to be able to shut down during this time. And, and I need this much of a turnaround, um, between, you know, being home and, and being back on set the next day. Mm -hmm. And, um, and if you just say that early on, at least I found, I just, you know, like, look at different places in your career, you can say those things and get them. And sometimes you can't, but like when you're in, for me, like when I realized that like, okay, this is what's going on with me mm -hmm. and this is what I need to be able to operate at my best, then I need to ask for it and, and not take the jobs if they won't give it to me. And, and I am very grateful that everything I've worked on since finding it out 
they have been extremely understanding and um, work with me on it. Because for me, the autoimmune disorder Mm -hmm. is a gift because it's telling me, Hey, you keep this together and you keep your health as a priority. We won't go into a disease, but once you get into an autoimmune disease, once you have one, you are three times more likely to get a second one. Mm -hmm. So you can get lupus and then you can get MS and it's really bad. And I think if I'm remembering, remembering correctly, I think Selena Gomez famously came out talking about her lupus and had to get a kidney transplant from one of her yeah. friends. And I thought that was a really powerful thing. And that was before I even knew what I, I had, I think. Um, I remember that was, or maybe it was right around the same time I was realizing and finding it out. But, you know, for her, like lupus, like I said, it's an autoimmune disease that your body will attack itself. And for her, it was attacking her kidneys. It can attack people in different places. Um, but that's what was happening to her. And so, you know, it's just really important to me that I, that I work really hard not to get into a, a, a worse case for myself, but I, you know, I have kind of, you know, and for me, that has, that has meant that I don't, um, I can't have dairy and I can't have gluten, um, mm-hmm. which sucks because I love cheese so much. Yeah. Cheese is the best. <laughs> Only cheese I can have is Parmesan for some reason. It doesn't have lactose in it. Mm-hmm. So we'll do that. Um, but uh, I can't have gluten. I can't have added sugar. And there have been times when I've I've attempted and I've tried uh, to be like, oh, it's been X, you know a year and a half now. Let me just see. And then immediately I'll get all the symptoms that will be flooding back like within 12 hours. So, wow. and then it'll take me like a long time to basically calm my soldiers down. My question for you though, and I've been wanting to ask this, did when you felt like when you got the information that this is what you had, did, were you angry? Did you like, you know how some people get a disease or, or something's going on, they like get angry about it, like a victim? Or did you did you feel relief that you're like, okay, now I know what it is. Now I can move forward. Yeah, I felt relief. Yeah. And uh, I was grateful that I now understood what was happening. And, and then I went to how can I make this better? now that I know what I'm fighting, I can now fight it smartly. You know, before, you know, it's, there's just so many people that have so much input. You know, they look at you and you got, you got trainers, you got a nutritionist, you got this trainer who's also a nutritionist, you got this person. And then you got people who have their own experiences and everybody wants to say, oh, this is what you should do. And, um, this is, and, but then they don't understand what your body's going through. So they're telling exactly, you to do yeah. things that actually are counterintuitive, mm-hmm. you know, to yeah. what your body can handle. Yeah. I was at UCLA, the UCLA Medical Center, and I saw five doctors and they all connect me to each other. And then they all discuss together like, okay, this is what she has. Wow. And it was really great because then I'm like, okay, now I know what to do. And I've seen my I've seen myself change so much just in um, my health, my emotions, my moods, the way I look physically, it all just changed, you know, uh, by getting that answer. That, yeah. What's 100%. Gonna, is that, it's reminded me. And, and I know it, if the audience is going to be like, huh, Brianne, but when I found out I was a sex and love addict and got in the room and like heard, I was like, oh my God, I'm not like broken. Nothing's wrong with me. It's just, I have to deal with these kind of things. And it sounds like the same thing. Like you're not broken. You just have this thing you have to deal with to, to make you better physically. Yeah, a hundred percent. I don't, I, d- I do think that, the, that that is a, a good comparison because when you were talking about your sex and love addiction, what people just assume that is, 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 you know, someone who's just like having sex with everybody, and yeah. time, but you're, but you're looking at the other symptoms. You're like, why is it that I feel emotional at this time? Why do I feel so distraught when this happens or what, you know, it doesn't like you, you, all of your symptoms did not feel healthy. Yeah. And I was like, why can I not connect to people in my life? Like that was the main thing. Am I going to go through my life, never be connected completely to somebody else? Like always have one foot in and one foot out. Yeah. I thought I was broken. I thought I didn't have that gene that like could fully commit and be present with someone else. Well, that's, I I totally get that. You know, do you feel, but then you feel really connected to your son, right? I do, but I have to tell you, if I didn't do that work before having a child, I don't think I would be. I don't (laughs) think I had the tools to teach me how to have a healthy relationship. I think I I couldn't imagine having a child before doing all this work on myself. Well, I'm so glad that you're able to do it. I mean, I would look at things and I'm like, you know, I think that I'd see the commercials for fibromyalgia, (laughs) (laughs) And and it's just like, 
I'm like, these are like a lot of older people yeah, like, hanging out, having tea on their porch. <laughs> like, I don't think I connected that at all. Watering their lawn. I think yeah. it was like the like, old man yeah. watering yeah. his yeah. lawn. Fibromyalgia. And I was like, what? They're like, no, you know, I think that older people tend to go to the doctor more <laughs> to figure out what's wrong with them. And then what happens is a lot of younger people are, have fibromyalgia that then turns into an autoimmune disease because they didn't figure it out early enough. Wow. What I was doing, I was just going through it. Like it can't be, no, no, no. It's, it's gotta be something. I mean, I thought I had, I was like, I was convinced for the longest time I had leukemia or something because I was like, there's gotta be, they're like, there's no tumors in your body. I'm like, then it must be a blood disease. It must be, there's gotta be something. Something's wrong. Something doesn't feel right. Yeah. I'm telling you like what I went through, what for like six, it was exhausting. It was and you were working nonstop. I was working and then and then going on to red carpets and then, you know, just feeling like just crap so much and not knowing what I will be looking like in the morning. Right. And then having to like, and psychologically, how hard that is as a woman too, to like, okay, now this fits really different. And now I got to go out and, and then be photographed and not feel like myself or my face will change or that, you know, it's hard enough with being in the public eye, right? There's a lot of yeah. stress. Anxiety. And then on top of that, I just, I would have horrible sleepless nights. I have so much pain. I have so much, you know, the last thing we were able to go out to in public was, was Oscar night this past mm-hmm. year, 2020. Mm-hmm. And I was going to the Vanity Fair party. And like that day I woke up and was just probably about 10 pounds heavier than I normally was. And so, and you know, I, for me, I gain weight evenly all over, but you really see it in my face and in my arms, like, Oh, you know, then I'm trying to like relax, take baths, trying to really like you know, yourself up, like, you'll be fine. I'm just going to go. It's I'll just go, you know, (laughs) I'll look fine. You're trying to talk yourself, make yourself feel good. Cause I have to tell you just going to like red carpets or interviews when you don't feel good is the worst. Cause you have to act like you feel good. Yeah. And you can't really tell people that you, that, well, at least for me, I didn't want to tell people that I was struggling. You know, I didn't want to tell people that uh, what I was going through because that's not really what I was there to talk about or to promote. So, you know, And really what I wanted was just to feel good. And then, and then I, you know, the thing is I'm an actor, I'm not a model. You know, my, my job is, is to portray characters and to tell stories. And I I don't necessarily have to look a certain way. So that was something that I'd say to myself, like, look, you know, overnight, 10 pounds of water weight, the clothes fit differently. Where my stylist is having to bring us, you know, a seamstress over the day of to let things out. And that doesn't feel good, but you know what? It's okay. And it's not that I was like, Oh my God, I look heavier. It was not that I thought I looked fat is that it didn't feel like me. It just, you wake up and you're just in a new armor. So did you go to the vanity fair party? Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. And did you have a good time? The vanity fair party is always really fun. And, you know, I still remember getting my, the first invite to that. Such a cool thing. And that was like, when you get invites, he tells you what time you can go. Mm -hmm. Um, the less, insert whatever word you are, <laughs> the the later your time is. <laughs> so like, you can come to the Vanity Fair party after 1 a.m. <laughs> Great. Great. Um, uh, but, um, and then subsequently every year he gets to like, you can come for the dinner. And you're like, that's during the awards. Like that's, <laughs> it's very exciting, you know? Um, and so, but they're always, it's very nice and it feels very inclusive there, but maybe it's because, you know, you've been invited. I don't know. It's inclusive. So everybody's when- happy. They're like, I got yeah, invited. Yeah. I didn't get left out like in high school. Well, and they've got great food there and fun music. And so, yeah, I did have fun. I had this beautiful Versace dress on mm-hmm. and I loved it. And like I said, it, it did fit me differently. And I have an insecurity with my upper arm specifically. It's like I gain weight evenly, like I said, but I feel like it shows there a lot. I do too. I feel like if I gain weight, it shows in my arm. You are, you, well, I know that I'm like, you know, contradicting myself and I'm like, people don't, but like, you, like don't know what you're going through personally, but like you are very lean and your face is always beautiful. You look like, you look like a modern day, you're not like as curvy as Marilyn Monroe, but you have that classic Marilyn Monroe kind of like the big lips, the doughy eyes, like, oh. and you always dress so cute and you find like the best like bargains everywhere. Pretty amazing. I know I am. I'm the biggest bargain. Oh my God. I put you in my pocket. Thanks for all those comments. Oh my God, you are your, I don't, you, I don't think that you and I are, I've been around you. You and I don't, do not have the same arms issue. Oh, come on. You, we do not. We, I swear to God, we you do not. are so like, okay, we're just giving each other people listening and they're like, oh my no, God. No, no, no. But like, I, I think many, I, I would not normally encourage this because I don't like all the pictures, but go on to getting, you'll see that like, 
there's like one picture that I really like three quarters. So it was a different plan. I'm like, I think I posted that one. And then maybe like a far out one that I kind of had to post, but I didn't love it. And, um, and again, like I said, it's not that I was like, oh, I'm fat. It's just that you didn't feel like you were in your skin. I get it. Like as women, we fluctuate all the time. And some days you just don't feel great in your skin. Mm -hmm. And if you also have this thing where you blow up like that, I can imagine it's just like uncomfortable. You're just a little uncomfortable. It just, but it's also like with fibromyalgia, it, it gives you a fatigue and it gives Mm. you issues with your mood. You just, you feel depressed, you feel irritable. You, you, you don't, feel like yourself. Um, there's something going on because inflammation affects your brain as well. The whole body lights up and it's like I said, it's, you know, and that, so your brain is like in a really big fog. That was really hard for me, but I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot better now. I have ups and downs. Um, mm-hmm. and I think COVID definitely tested that because, yeah. you know, I was like, maybe I'll, I'll order, you know, this food or maybe I'll have that. Maybe I'll have the cheese plate. Yeah, I'm like, well, find me up for the cheese plate. For me, it was like the Rocky Road ice cream from Thrifties at Rite Aid. (laughs) Oh, they have the best ice cream. They do. It's always so soft. Oh, God, their animal cracker one is like my downfall. I truly don't eat any other ice cream flavor besides Rocky Road. I think there is no other flavor that needs for me. Um, But, and then I had ups and downs and then, you know, um, having to to figure it out. But, um, but I'm determined to figure it out. And, and, you know, honestly, it's, you know, a really good benefit of, of the fibromyalgia diagnosis is that the diet that I have to go on is very anti-aging. And I felt myself just feel better, fear, feel more youthful, see my skin feel so much better. And everything is just felt a lot better. Um, I love that. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you found the answer because when you finally see like, okay, this is what's going on. But my last question for you Mm -hmm. is if anybody's going through a physical ailment or struggling, especially during this period of time, what would be your advice for them? This is not going to be popular, but (laughs) I think you have to go to the internet. You know, you got to go online and, and I know people talk about like WebMD and people think that they end up, you know, it can be kind of scary because you can think, oh my God, I have all these things. Yeah. But, you know, Reddit is a really great community and you can find a lot of subreddits that will actually be really helpful. And that's how, how I found out a lot of it. Cause I was just trying to search for certain, like it might, the things that were bothering me can be attributed to a lot of different causes. Mm-hmm. It is really hard to find doctors that can do the legwork to figure out what's wrong with you. You know, I think that's the hard thing is that right now our doctors, they work really hard. They've got a lot of patients. They don't have the time to sit down and go through your entire medical history, you know, yeah, and try to like connect all the dots. Right. And that's why for you if, as having a kid, it's probably really important that every time you go to the doctor, anytime you get any blood test from your kid, you ask for that and you just put it into a file. Yeah. So later on, you've got this, and when, when your kid's 25, 30 and say he wants to start, we, who knows if there's like any, even anti-aging drugs in the future or any kind of anything that he could do to like help his life. He's like, okay, well, we need to know where your levels were when you were 10 so that we know where you're at, what's happening now. And they can kind of go back to that or God forbid something worse happens and yeah. there's an ailment they can go, okay, where, what is this? And they can help cure it faster or figure out what it is faster. So I just think one, you know, don't be afraid to go to the internet. And I, I go to Reddit. I think it's, it's a really great community. Mm-hmm. I think really smart people out there. Uh, I think that we, you know, it's a really great place that, uh, to share information and to understand. And to, there's a lot of really, you know, what I found like a lot of really considerate, thoughtful people who care. Um, and that was helpful. And I, I'd also say if you can get blood work done, yeah, it's one of those things that like, if you can get blood work done and then find a doctor who can take the time to go through it and say like, what's wrong with me? Cause for me, I did all the blood work. I, like I said, I thought for sure they find some kind of blood disorder or disease or something. And, and they're like, everything's fine. I was like, if everything's fine, why do I feel like this? Yeah. And then I was told a lot of times that people it's stress and anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm feeling so crappy all the time. Like how do you make it stop? Well, breathe or meditate through it. And I do believe in meditation but it was something more, something else had happened. Something Mm -hmm. happened, something clicked in the wrong way. And so I think going into forums like Reddit that that you can communicate with other people is really helpful. Getting your blood tested is really helpful. 
and meditating, I think is it's something that I'm struggling with, but I actually use this device called Muse. Have you heard mm-hmm. of Muse? No, I use Calm because I have a hard time meditating too. Like it's torture for me. So Muse, it's a headband that you wear and it senses your brain waves. It's really pretty amazing. It's like you have an app because I have a hard time meditating. Um, yeah. I have a hard time shutting my brain off. Me but too. more than that, more than ha- shutting my brain off, I have a hard time doing it because I'm constantly thinking, am I doing this right? How do I know if I'm doing it right? I know. You're and like, like, is this how it's supposed to, am I supposed to feel yeah. like this? Wait, my, my mind is floating and thinking, of, yeah. like, wait, no, no, go to zero. Go back to zero. Don, have I hit, have I hit there? Am I in Nirvana? What's happening? <laughs> And, but so this, this device, it's really great because you turn on the app and you have the the brain sensor on, and I put on the ocean waves app, uh, soundtrack as you begin your meditation and you can go for like just three minutes, you know, you can go for as little as you want as you're meditating, the ocean waves are calm and they're, they're coming through very peacefully. And then as your brain starts to think about things, which it does and starts to go off on little paths all of a sudden the ocean will start crashing louder and the winds will start picking up and you'll realize, Oh my God, my brain is going. And then you go, okay, hold on. Let me just try to calm my brain down. And then when you get really, really peaceful and your mind isn't going at all, you'll hear the birds chirp. And that's like, that's a good sign. So then afterwards you look at the app and you can see how many bird chirps you got and how many minutes you did. And how. And it, it, to me, it's like a video game. It's a video game that at the end of the day, it's still achieving what, I need, which is my brain to be calm. And my brain is the thing that is controlling this video game. Perfect. Oh, thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and going through everything with us. I'm so grateful. Yeah. It's been fun talking about it. I I haven't talked about it yet. So it's really nice to be able to. I think it's going to help a lot of people and people that don't feel alone if they're struggling with their health and figuring stuff out. So for sure. Hopefully. (laughs) Well, if you want to be on the show, please email me at secretlifepodcast at iCloud.com. Until next time. Thank you again for listening to Secret Life Podcast. Please subscribe, share, send me a note, and you can always support the show with a donation on our site, secretlifepodcast.com. Until next time. Bye.